Great. Uh, yeah. First of all, I want to th want to thank all of you, uh, Austin, Taylor, Cynthia, and the entire team for Integrated Equities uh, for putting on this presentation. Uh, we really appreciate Integrated Equities for giving sponsors like Bravesco an opportunity to discuss our platform. Um, I also want to thank the the listeners. I know all of you are busy, uh, and so for want to thank you for taking time out of your day to listen to what we have to say, and uh, I'll be finding informative and uh, learn a few things here uh, along the way. My name again is uh, Scott Lee. I am one of the founders of Bravesco. I'm gonna talk about investing in US commercial real estate as well, specifically about Rivesco Properties Trust. So let me just talk about uh, kind of contents for today, kind of a little bit about us, a uh, little bit about the fund and its performance. Um, what's next for 2024, as well as kind of the overall why, why retail and, and why Rivesco. So uh, I'll hop right into it. Kind of who is Rivesco? Well, it's a Vancouver-based story, although our focus is completely in the U.S. Uh, that seems kind of weird. Why, why is that? Well, quite simply, the U.S. is 10 times larger than Canada and just provides way more opportunities for us and our investors. Um, Reese, Chris, myself have all known each other since university, so a long, long time ago. Uh, and we've known Mark for uh, our CFO for over 10 years as well. So uh, we have a long, strong history uh, together. Um, collectively, we've been in the commercial real estate world for over 30 years each, uh, involved in every facet of the retail shopping center industry. Uh, one thing of note, operationally, uh, our full team is actually based in Denver. You know, why is that? Well, I, we just felt that we needed to be in the United States, given that's where we are acquiring all our assets. Uh, I would not want to be a sponsor trying to acquire U.S.-based assets solely based from Vancouver. So our entire operational team, Mark, Reese, and the 15 other people are all based in Denver. So let's get into it. Let's uh, talk about what do we acquire? Well, uh, think about your grocery anchored or needs-based shopping center. That's basically what we acquire. Uh, we're focused on centers like Caulfield Village in West Vancouver, or for those of you in Edmonton, a, a current at Windermere in Southwest Edmonton, or for any Toronto-based uh, investors, uh, things like the, um, uh, the Metro uh, at uh, Bayview and Eglinton in Toronto. One thing we don't buy is we don't buy enclosed malls. The reason is quite simple. Once you put a roof on a shopping center, you got to heat it, you got to cool it, you have to secure it, and you got to maintain it. It's very, very expensive, and uh, it's it's just not accretive to what we feel is the right place to be in the market cycle where we are today. So um, just here are a couple of items that we focus on when we're buying or acquiring assets. Uh, we always buy below replacement cost. Quite simply, we want to be the lowest cost alternative for uh, any potential tenant in the marketplace. If we can be cheaper than the next guy, we're probably going to win that deal. Secondly is, and you'll like to hear this, we want existing cash flow for our investors day one. Uh, that's something that we strive to do in each and every one of our assets. And then finally, we want stable, long-term tenants whose businesses are growing uh, so they can pay their rent. You know, guys like Whole Foods, Winners, Marshalls, Home Goods. Tenants like that uh, in a Canadian context. So that's kind of essentially what we acquire. So what do we do to create value? I mean, ultimately, our role is to provide steady cash flow uh, to the investor and increase the value of the RPT units. Uh, and we do this by systematically executing on these four elements each and every day. This is what we focus on. So rather than go for all four of them, I'll talk about maybe one or two of them. Uh, restructuring leases is kind of unique in, in the retail world. Uh, you, some of you may ask, well, how can you do that? You've got a lease, it's a written contract, what can you do? Well, a lot of times the anchor tenant is looking for something. Perhaps he's running out of term on his lease, he's doing really well, but he needs more time. He wants to you know, increase sales and reinvest. So we'll work with the tenant to restructure the lease to their benefit and ours, and ultimately the, the investors of RPT, by 
extending that lease, putting some money into the deal, and allowing the rental stream to continue to grow. So that's one way to do it. Um, a second and less obvious way, again, kind of more specific to retail, is we spend a lot of time improving what we call the tenant mix. So we'll look at the tenants and try to move out, if you will, the older, probably uh, more tired tenants and try to bring in those new and more innovative tenants that bring, you know, quite simply bring more retail traffic to our centers. And the byproduct of that is higher rents, which is ultimately leads to higher valuations for, for the fund and the investors. So just a couple of tricks there that we employ uh, along the way to, to create, create more value. So how do we do this? Well, because we work with every major retailer for over the last 30 years, we have some really deep relationships uh, uh, and intel into these retailers. Um, you know, for example, you know, Austin and Taylor quite simply could call or put a call into Costco's real estate team every day for a year and probably never get a phone call back. Uh, meanwhile, I was on the phone with them yesterday for an hour. So it's just, you know, because we have these relationships and the ability to tap into our network allows us to uh, create unique opportunities for RPT and its investors. So, so what does this mean to you? Well, you know, at the end of the day, uh, Revesco and its principals are co-investing 10% of all the equity for every acquisition thus far. So essentially our money is right beside yours. Um, now, secondly, unlike a lot of other groups out there, uh, we have either fortunately or unfortunately lived through several cycles of uh, rising interest rates. And so as a consequence, we do not use any variable rate debt in our portfolio. And thirdly, you know, we have Mark on our team who strategically is making sure that uh, no more than 15% of any of our mortgages renew in any one year. So we're not hit with a big uh, mortgage renewal at an inopportune time. So we really try to make sure we, we focus on that. And then lastly, we talked about our unparalleled access to tenant information. We really do utilize our uh, skill sets and our relationships to uh, advance uh, the interest of RPT and its investors. So let's talk a little bit about the fund. Uh, let's just talk about kind of uh, where we've been and, and where we're going. Uh, we started this fund about 12 years ago, or excuse me, let me rephrase. We started Revesco Properties about 12 years ago. We need, and we basically started out on an LPGP basis. Uh, but several of our biggest and earliest investors asked us to create uh, more of a fund, uh, allowing us to kind of share uh, in our investment approach as well as our returns to investors. So uh, the main point here is our long-term successful track record. Uh, it's given us the confidence and the validation, quite honestly, to create Provesco Properties Trust. So here's a little bit of our portfolio. Um, you know, commercial real estate, we love to throw a bunch of numbers at you and hopefully you'll remember some of these. Look, the only one I really pay attention to is the 97% occupancy level. Uh, when we keep shopping centers full, uh, our investors will be well served. That's really what I focus on. That's why I have Mark uh, on the call. He worries about all the other numbers, but I get to worry about making sure these things are full and the income's growing. That's really my primary focus and allows us, everything else will solve itself if we do that. Um, what else can I say? Uh, talking about kind of just the, the investment highlights, a um, uh, couple of key metrics here. Um, the main point here is that, again, we are 10% of all the equity raised thus far. Uh, so our money, again, is right beside yours and your investors. Uh, you can see the preferred distribution and you can see our tar targeted annual return. So in terms of highlighting some, some highlights, uh, here's our total return, if you will, for the, the period of two years. Uh, here's our net asset value. Um, You'll notice that we've written down our net asset value uh, to be really, quite honestly, reflective of what's happening in the world today. We always want to be you know, honest, transparent, and realistic in our valuations, primarily because we have so much of our own money in this deal. 
Uh, Mark can certainly give you more details, but um, there's a very rigorous process in terms of how we calculate NAV and uh, you know, what's happening in the marketplace today. Uh, finally, uh, NOI growth. I mean, the main reason why we have NOI growth is we keep our centers full. Uh, that's, you know, period in a story. If we can, again, if we uh, keep our centers full, the rest will take care of itself. So what's next? So we're really, really excited about 2024. Uh, the Atlanta, uh, like for example, uh, let me just talk about kind of what we're doing this year. So our game plan is going to be basically to acquire uh, $50 million worth of shopping centers. Uh, that'll require roughly about $25 million of U.S. equity. And we've been, for example, looking in some markets very, very hard, but for one reason or another, have not been able to uh, find anything until recently. Um, we've been looking at the Atlanta market as an example. Uh, we love that market and have been wanting to acquire assets there for quite some time. Um, but quite simply, it's just been too expensive relative to what we see in, in uh, historical norms. Uh, it has over 6 million people. Uh, retail sales are exceptionally strong because we're in contact with every major retailer in, in the market. There's tons of employment growth and it has a very, very low vacancy rate. Uh, we've been fortunate to place under contract uh, a shopping center called Roswell Village. Uh, it's located in, uh, just north of a community called Buckhead which is in Atlanta. It's extremely wealthy. It's a very high-end neighborhood. Um, great retailers, great homes, great growth, uh, very, des very desirable. Uh, you can see the financial metrics here as I've outlined them. But if you go back to the slide uh, of what we buy, we're essentially acquiring this asset for well below replacement cost at $253 a foot. You cannot replace this shopping center for that dollar amount. Uh, Exceptional cash flow. I mean, 9.6, 9.7% cash return to the fund is uh, right from day one. And at the end of the day, the shopping center is anchored by fantastic tenants like Marshalls, Ross, Starbucks, Dollar General. Uh, so I would say for us, this fits Revesco's criteria perfectly. So the why, why retail? Well, one of the main reasons is we know commercial retail commercial real estate really, really well. We've been doing it for a long time. There's nothing that we haven't faced uh, in our careers that uh, you know, we, we cannot deal with at all. We've seen it, we've seen it all. We've probably orchestrated some of the solutions, maybe some of the problems too, but we know it well, well enough to be able to protect uh, RPT and its investors. Uh, keep in mind, 85% of all US retail sales still takes place in physical stores. And what COVID has taught us is the most successful retailers have uh, a strong footing in both the physical stores as well as e-commerce. They need to have both they, in order to be successful. Mm -hmm. And those are the types of retailers that Revesco tends to focus on. Uh, you'll also notice that Retail uh, has had some of the lowest vacancy rates in our career. Um, it, it's interesting, uh, a couple of reasons. Retail has been out of favor for so long. Uh, most developers and institutions would rather invest, at least until recently, in industrial, in multifamily, or you know, pre-COVID you know, into office. Um, as a consequence, the supply of new retail has been dwindling for years as population continues to, to move forward. So it's created this kind of unique situation that will continue for quite some time. Lastly, keep in mind, on average, there's over 100 enclosed malls in the United States that get demolished every year. So uh, again, that acts as another uh, supply kind of mechanism that helps kind of regulate what's going on in the marketplace overall. So the macroeconomics for retail is actually very, very strong. And quite honestly, it's really, really hard. And you can see the economic data. It's very difficult to bet against the U.S. consumer uh, over the long term. Um, lastly, why Rubesco? Uh, well, 
you know, there's several points here, but I think the main one to remember is that we've been doing uh, this uh, successfully for a very, very long time. And it's an opportunity, I think, to share our institutional quality investment approach and our returns with, uh, you know, investors and groups like integrated equities. So that's kind of the, the, uh, the end of my presentation. Um, I'm here with Mark. Uh, certainly more than happy to answer any questions uh, that anybody may have and uh, 